Hello, my name is Gareth. You're watching the Hub Online Network, and today we're going to be doing a recap of what's going to be taking place tonight of the Ashcroft Village Council meeting. Um, as you can tell, we're back live on Facebook. I don't think that being on YouTube is necessarily working out for us all that well. Uh, so, without further ado, let's get to it. <laughs> hoping to accomplish with these videos is uh, before Ashcroft and Cash Street Council meetings give you guys a, at home an opportunity to know what's going to be talked about to see if you're interested in watching because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing these council meetings to you live via Facebook um, on the Hub Online Network so here is there we go all right so um, this is what a typical agenda looks like when it comes to uh, Ashcroft or Cash Creek. Um, so we see here these bigger boxes is kind of the main meat and potatoes of what they're going to be talking about. And it just really sets everything up nicely to follow along. You can, you can take a look at these agendas also at home. You can get them off of the uh, Ashcroft of, Village of Ashcroft website. Um, so what typically never gets talked about, because it's assumed that if people are interested, they'll go and they'll take a look at the agenda. So the councils never really go into any detail about what they're discussing and making decisions on. Um, so for example, in a meeting, they would say, um, item 6.1, what is council's uh, discretion on this? And everybody would vote and they would move on. But they wouldn't say to you at home what 6.1 means. Um, so we're going to just take a look at a few things like that. So we're going to jump to page 8. We're going to start there. You can take a look at the minutes from the previous uh, meeting in this as well. Those are there for the first time live for public viewing. Um, but we're going to skip ahead from that. We're going to start fresh and take a look at what is happening starting on page 8. All right, so tonight... Uh, there's going to be a staff report to council, and this is going to be from CAO, or the Chief Administrative Officer, Daniela Dick. Um, and this is in regards to the council working group and committee appointments. Um, so the purpose of this is to provide council with an opportunity to review committee appointments and make any necessary or desired changes. Um, and there would be a motion on the floor if uh, council decided that that was something that they were interested in. Um, and so this year, the council must also consider the strategic priorities for 2021 and appoint two members of council to the strategic priority working groups. So the working groups in this case are the emergency plan update, the storm drainage and runoff study, the water to the Ashcroft Indian Band, the North Ashcroft Reservoir, Trails Master Plan, Heritage Park Assessment and Community Garden, and the fire, par uh, fire Department Sustainability. So throughout the next year, these are going to be seven of sort of the ma seven main things that the village council is going to be looking at, and they'll be appointed village council members. They get put into each one of these different groups, uh, and it typically is two people with a backup. So if you think that the uh, councillors just go to meetings and then do nothing else, um, hopefully this will will, will put put a little bit of the work ne needed into perspective. Other things that are going to happen are, so that's the uh, so staff report to council, another one from CAO Daniela Dick, this one in regard to BC Transit um, and the annual operating agreement. Uh, so the purpose of this is to request council approval to sign the annual operating agreement. Um, the discussion would be that the transit committee has reviewed the annual operating agreement and is recommending that council endorse administration to sign the agreement and return this to BC Transit. Um, so this agreement does talk a little bit about money and what that means. So that's another thing that the council will be looking at, and that is 6.2, I believe. So again, um, as things go through these meetings, these are all things that they would just that the councillors already know about because they've read all of this and they just vote yes or no or they ask a few questions if they have any, uh, et cetera. Uh, next up, we have a letter that is to 
the council. Um, that is attention of Daniela Dick, Chief Administrative Officer, and this is to, uh, the subject is a 2020-2021 amended annual operating agreement and safe restart contribution. Uh, so this is a letter that they would have gotten um, and it breaks down uh, some money, what it's gonna cost each, each month um, based off of hours over the years. And this is from the BC Transit uh, Government Relations Officer, Seth Wright. Um, and again, all of these letters and emails you can check out for yourself in the agenda package. I'm not going to read it all out for you guys, otherwise you'll get bored. Um, but I'm just trying to give you a, a brief overview as to what is in the agenda package for tonight. Um, so one of the things that they want to do is maintain affordability of transit services by limiting average annual public fare um, increases to 2.3% in each of BC Transit's 2021, 2022 to 24 fiscal years. It is expected that by receiving this contribution, the Village of Ashcroft will work with BC Transit to maintain targeted essential transit service levels and affordability as outlined above. Um, so that's one of the things that that particular letter is about. Um, to continue on from this, uh, this is the annual operating agreement that is between the villages of Ashcroft, Cash Creek, and Clinton. Um, and that is based off of, because originally the bus would just go from Ashcroft to Clinton and then the bus would take people from those places to Kamloops or 100 Mile as necessary. As of last year, maybe a year before, um, it all seems so close together with COVID going on, uh, the uh, village of Cash Creek has joined in this after asking permission to join, after not being a part of the group for several years. Um, so this is the full uh, agreement between the th not only the three villages, but the three villages and transit. So if that's something that interests you, you can uh, take a look and see, you know, whereas the authority is uh, authorized to contract to contract for transit services for the purpose of providing and maintaining those services and facilities necessary for establishment, maintenance, and operation of the public passenger transportation system in the transit service area. Um, so again, if this is something that, that interests you, you want to see all the rules and all the ins and outs of what the, the, the bus has to do in these three municipalities, you can check this out. Um, and it's a fairly lengthy, uh, you know, 12, 12, 12 ish pages of stuff here um, that goes through definitions, incorporation of schedules, incorporation of transit service agreement, terms and renewal, uh, freedom of information and protection of privacy, settlement of disputes, miscellaneous provisions, local contributions and, re and reserves, safe restart contribution, governing law, counterparts, notice of communications, tariffs, service specifications, and budget. Um, and all of that is laid out within those 12 pages. So let's just skip ahead here, see what else we got on the agenda. Okay. Uh, so staff report to council. This one again is from Daniela Dick, um, and this is in regards to open meetings. Um, so the purpose of this letter is to release closed meetings motions to the public meetings. Uh, the discussion, for the purpose of transparency, closed meeting motions that are not required to remain confidential are routinely released to the public throughout the year. Council releases motions from closed meetings for the year end uh, housekeeping purposes. The attached listing includes the uh, actionable motions from closed meetings. So if you don't know what a closed meeting is, the meeting that you typically see on our YouTube channel of the council sessions are open to the public. Anybody can go except for in COVID where it really is just us, which is why we're moving to a live format. Um, but if the village is talking about uh, specific people, specific addresses, um, employees, et cetera, et cetera, it goes into a closed meeting where we, I'm not allowed to film it, I'm not allowed to be in the room. Um, and they discuss all of these things. And then if there's something actionable that the, that the council has to put forward, it then moves into the open meeting so everybody's able to see what the village is doing and there's transparency between um, everything. So you, you guys at home always have an option to see what's happening as the village council does stuff. Uh, so some of the things that were discussed were la 
So topic of discussion, land tenure of North Ashcroft Reservoir, resolution to be released to open meeting. Uh, so the motion on the first one would be that council approve staff to engage in negotiations with Desert Hills Ranch regarding the transfer of the property of the North Ashcroft Re Reservoir, which is located on, in order to begin the process of subdivision and transfer of the title and property. So that is something that is about a specific uh, business or resident that would be done in, cl in a closed meeting and is now being moved into the public eye. Um, another one would be extension of the 10% early discount for utilities. So the motion would be that the 10% early payment discount for utility payments be extended to April uh, 30th, 2020. Um, that is something that's actually already complete. So that's great. Uh, oh, these are really old, aren't they? Where's a new one here? Here we go. Okay, so street lighting increase that staff write a letter to the BCUC in, op in opposition to the proposed rate increase setting impacts to small communities with limited funding. So that is, um, you know, that's great. And that's taking place as of now. So that's good. That's happening tonight at uh, tonight's meeting. So that's just, a, again, a list of things is in the agenda. I mean, let me know if you guys find these videos interesting. Um, I know that some of these agendas are difficult to sort of get through because there's some of these agendas. I've seen agendas where there's 400 pages of stuff. Um, this one's pretty light with only, I believe, 90, 89, sorry. Uh, so here's one from, uh, again, it's, it's about open meetings, and this one is from Yogi Bala, the Chief Financial Officer, or the CFO. I'm also trying to give you guys all the acronyms so that you can keep up in the meeting to know who everybody is. Um, so the purpose of this particular letter is to inform council on the tender response and acceptance of the lowest bid. So the discussion would be, uh, he says that we had a good response to the tender and received five quotes. We have reviewed the bid to have each of the references checked. Uh, we have proceeded to accept the lowest bid by Jim Dent uh, Construction as good references were received and there were being no sub no substantive reason to choose otherwise. Uh, please see the attached tender s uh, summary. So then they would include the quote. Um, so you can see how much each of the different people uh, quoted for whatever the job is. I'm not sure what this job is for. Oh, the river intake project, okay. Um, which the river intake project is going to, another thing going down by the water treatment facility as far as I know. Um, and now you can now you can see the breakdown of who has applied for this job, and the, you can cite the reasons why they chose to have this person or this company do it. So um, again, transparency is key, and this seems to be a very good way of showing the public who they're choosing and why they're choosing. Um, let me know what you guys think at home. I, I've in in. Lots of things, you know, it's typically the lowest, pers the lowest person bidding gets the job. Has anybody that has a uh, company or something that they would take a quote for, has anybody ever gone like middle of the road um, and not gone for the cheapest option? And if you have gone for the cheap cheapest option, have you ever had a bad experience or has everything been great? Please let me know. You can give me an email at honjournalist at ashcrafthub.com. Um, we would love to hear your feedback on this and on any other subject that is going on in our area. All right, so that is what a, a bid looks like and that letter from Yogi Bala. Uh, next up, we have another. So here's one from Brian Benenwith, who is the director of public works. Um, and his deal is to update council in regard to the hot tub replacement project that is that would be taking place at the Ashcroft pool. Um, so I'm just going to read the first paragraph here. He says that in the discussion that 2020 started out to be a typical year, we were wrong. Uh, we started out working on design deficiencies and warranty work that needed to be completed at the water treatment plant. Uh, other projects include new water intake design for the water treatment plant, design work for the new number one sewer lift, uh, a lift station, and not to forget backup generators for the number two water pump station, which again, um, as far as I know, has been approved and will be taking place as construction will be done shortly. Uh, we also worked on approval from Interior Health for the hot tub replacement, Ashcroft Indian Bend Water, subdivision bylaw, and possible property development in North Ashcroft. So if you don't know about any of those things that are going on, all of those things are going on, and you can see 
Uh, read more about that in Brian's breakdown of everything that happened in 2020. Um, another thing that you can do is Barbara and I did a uh, sort of 2020 in review video. You can go check that out on our YouTube channel or Facebook page. You can get caught up on all of that as well. So th again, this is to show what these types of um, letters and reports show. And this is a very detailed uh, showing as to what he and the people that worked in Ashcroft and Public Works got up to doing um, last year. So now here is a letter. So this is a piece of correspondence um, from the softball of British Columbia group. Um, it says, Dear Mayor and Council, uh, this is in re uh, reference to the COVID relief funding. And they're saying that we are writing to you to seek financial support for our male and female softball athletes from across BC that will represent BC at the Canada Summer Games in 2022 in Niagara, Ontario. The effects of COVID-19 have been felt in every sector of amateur sports in BC, and we have not been immune to the effects of the pandemic. Our athletes include members from your community and aspiring athletes from all communities in BC. Now, it does not give a breakdown as to how much they're Oh, they're asking for, for a grant and aid of $500. So that is something that um, groups can typically ask for. 500 bucks, I believe, is the maximum. Uh, and that will be something that is voted on tonight in a yay or nay situation. And we'll see what they say. And this is an application form. So if you have a group in Ashcroft that may benefit from a possible grant and aid to help you guys get off your feet, you can always apply to the village. They have so many uh, grants that they can hand out. Um, and this is what that particular uh, grant application looks like for organizations. I'll just go a little bit slower here. Okay, so then there's a news release um, from the former Ashcroft Elementary School property community consultation process, which I actually, uh, I read out the other day um, at the end of the week. This came out on Friday, I believe. So you can go check out my video on that that came out last Friday. That is on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, but this is from the school district explaining what they want to do, why they're doing it in regards to the uh, uh, term disposal of the Ashcroft Elementary School property. Um, disposal does not mean destroying the building. Disposal means you know taking it off of the financial books. Um, there's still some confusion about that. So keep that in mind. Um, and again, you can you can find this letter on the School District 74 uh, Facebook page, website, etc. Or you can find it in the agenda package for the village of Ashcroft for tonight. Um, another letter from the city of Rossland. This is dated December 16th. Um, so this is from, or this is to the Premier John Horgan and Adrian Dix. Uh, so this letter is about... Uh, letter of support for the cooperation of the City of Vernon. So the City of Roslyn Council at their regular meeting held on Monday, December 14th, passed the following resolution, quote, whereas costs is a significant barrier to people accessing contraception, particularly to people with low incomes, youth, and people from marginalized communities, and whereas providing free prescription contraception has been shown to improve health outcomes for parents and infants by re reducing the risks associated with unintended pregnancy and is likely to reduce direct medical costs on the provincial health systems, etc. So what this would do is the council would say, we, we will give support or we will uh, receive and file. Um, that would be the motion for that. Uh, here's something from the city of Kamloops, office from the mayor, um, all UBCM members via email, so this is in regards to the overdose crisis and call for overdose action plan. So this one is about, whereas the opioid crisis is one of the largest public health emergencies of our lifetime, with a death about every two hours on average, and a death a total of over 16,360 since 2016, um, whereas other countries have significantly reduced drug-related fatalities with reforms such as legal regulation of illicit drugs to ensure safe supply and decriminalization for personal use. Uh, so again, this would be something that the council would either show support, uh, send a letter of support, or uh, receive and file. All that being said, if you or someone that you know of um, does uh, illicit drugs, toxic drugs, hard drugs, um, 
try not to use alone. There is an app that you can use. You can set a timer that lets you, you know, you, you do your drugs and if you do not turn the timer off because you've now overdosed or you've passed out, an ambulance will be alerted to your position and will come and help you out. So um, keep that in mind. But if you're going to use, don't use alone. Uh, so, but that is what uh, is from the mayor's office from the city of Kamloops. So another one from the city of Kamloops. Uh, so this would be a resolution from the minutes of a regular meeting of the municipal council of the city of Kamloops held in the Valley's first lounge, the Sandman Center. It says that th this is a request that the government of Canada declare the overdose crisis a national public health emergency so that it is taken seriously and funded appropriately. And two, it immediately seeks input from the people most affected by the crisis and meet with uh, provinces and territories to develop a comprehensive pan-Canadian overdose action plan, which includes comprehensive supports. So there's a couple of places in Ashcroft and Cash Creek that might benefit from taking a closer look at what that is. Um, but again, this would be a um, receive and file or send a letter of support. From SILGA, a call for nominations as per the Constitution of the Southern Interior Local Government Association. The call for nominations is now going out to all members, mayors, councillors, regional chairs, and district and directors who wish to seek a position on the SILGA executive for the 2021-22 elections, which will be held virtually prior to the SILGA convention in late April. So anybody on the councils uh, or as a chair of some kind that would like to get their name into the ring, um, make sure to sign up today. Uh, call for resolution 2021 convention. The SILGA annual general meeting and convention is scheduled to be held virtually sometime between April 27th and 30th. The SILGA convention requires that resolutions be considered at the annual meeting are to be received by the security treasurer no later than 60 days prior to the meeting. So there is going to be a handful of things that SILGA is going to want Ashcroft and Cash Creek to um, uh, vote on in advance if it re pertains to us, uh, at which point they can do that and send that in in advance. So this is from Heather Inglis to School District 74. This is a uh, piece of correspondence that says, Dear Trustees, I am writing to you to encourage you to deal with the disposal of the AES building and property in such a way that allows the Ashcroft Hub Society to continue operations that provide a critical piece of the health, wellness, and livability of our village. As a former business owner in the, uh, in the Hub and now a neighbor, I have witnessed firsthand the number of residents that use the facilities from 2 to 92 that are opportunities for everyone. When I encourage friends to move to our community, the Hub is one of the first places I show them. In Ashcroft, we are blessed to have a group of citizens who have a vision and plan to provide services to our community on an ongoing basis and have saved Ashcroft from being abandoned public building in our midst. So that, I'm not going to read it all. So that's from Heather Inglis. Again, a receive and file. Um, I'm sure that this particular subject will be a thing that is brought up tonight. Uh, news release from former Ashcroft Elementary School consultation process. The Gold Trail Board of Education held an open meeting on Tuesday, January 5th. At the meeting, the board approved the proceeding with community consultation process on the possible disposal of the former Ashcroft Elementary School property. The board recognizes that the process will need to occur differently during the pandemic and is looking forward to hearing from the public about property use. Um, so, again, this is more just for the... Now, this, now we're getting this stuff that's just more for council's information. Um, same thing for BC Utilities Commission. Another one for Silga. Uh, more for Silga here, more Silga. What's interesting is um, when it's a 400, like I can't, like we're already at 25 minutes in this particular video. What's amazing is when these things are 400 pages, I don't know what I would do. I'm going to have to just sort of pick the top 10 things. Um, this is my first time doing this one, so I'm just seeing how it's going. Um, but there's more correspondence now from Gold Country and with their newsletter. And then typically at the bottom of these things, so here's the, something from Interior Health, etc. 
So at the bottom of these things is, okay, so now we're back to sort of things happening in Ashcroft. Here are the motions that the village of Ashcroft is working on. Um, so the green is completed, yellow is in progress, and red is on temporary hold. And so look, there's a lot of green things there. These are sort of the things that are on deck to do or just finished. Um, transit committee. So, and, and then at the very bottom are reports. So the village of Ashcroft, so people present, for example, from Cash Creek is Wendy Coomer. Um, from Clinton is David Park. From Abbotsford is Jonah Anstead. So he's the representative that goes on to the Joint Paratransit Committee minutes. And so now this he, he's going to be sharing the report of the minutes that came in. So everybody can read about what that particular meet, what happened in that meeting. Then there's going to be, so this one is a report to council uh, for the purpose to update council on current status of work undertaken by the Economic Development and Tourist Coordinator. Which, was, which is Margaret. Uh, so she's saying that the Economic Development and Tourism Committee had a planning session to discuss what they felt should be priorities for 2021. The strategic plan w was created as a public guide uh, to show what objectives were accomplished. The ongoing projects have been carried over as well as the priorities that were set for the 2020-2021 uh, with the recent purchase of the trade show items, etc. So you can check out all of that stuff. Um, which is in this economic development and tourism package. And then typically the last thing is like the, the mayor's report. Um, but in this one, it's not. It's just that's the end of that particular thing. So that in a nutshell is what is in a uh, council meeting agenda. Um, tonight, we again, we're going live 6 p.m. On our, on our Facebook page for the Ashcroft Council meeting. So be there for that. And then tomorrow, I'll give you guys a little bit of a recap as to what went down. Um, so hopefully you guys like this. Let me know if you did. If you want to see more of these things, um, the councils have gone to every week now, so I can do this every Monday to let you know what's going to happen. We'll show you the thing, the meeting, and then uh, Tuesdays, we'll give you a recap. So if you like that, let me know. Again, you can email me, honjournalist at ashcrofthub.com. My name is Gareth. That's been fun, and we will see you guys uh, tonight.